Very good. Okay, let's stand. We'll get started. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Shine in our hearts, O Master who loves mankind, to be the light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind that we may comprehend the things of your gospel. Instill in us all to reverence for your blessed commandments, so that having trampled down all of our new desires, we may lead a spiritual life, opening and doing all things that are pleasing to you. For you, Christ, our God, are the illumination of our soul and bodies. And to you we offer up glory, together with your Father, who is without beginning, and your all holy, good, and high creating spirit, now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Before we sit down, let's uh, <clears throat> take a moment of silence for all those people who have lost their lives in the uh, crisis with the war in Ukraine. And then I'll end with a short prayer. Well, Lord, we ask you to have mercy upon all those who have given their lives in the war in Ukraine. We ask you, Lord, to send down your Holy Spirit to guide those and give those people in leadership positions wisdom so that people can live in peace and harmony. We ask you to intervene and do what you know is best. And most importantly, let thy will be done as this conflict is brought to an end. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. I know. You're saying by the what's happening is there's so many that have uh, left mostly women and children, yeah. and uh, they were just showing that there were people coming into Ukraine yeah. from other places yeah. to yeah. help yeah. them, you know. So it's just amazing. Uh, there are two people in the parish here. Um, one is, her name is Raisa. Uh, Mary knows her uh, well. I've spoken with her prior to when everything started uh, with the conflict over there. And the other one is Mary, uh, who I haven't seen in a while. But uh, Mary's going to give me Raisa's number. I'm going to get in touch with her at all because uh, she was very concerned about, about this uh, situation there. Uh, Mike, if you would pass that down to uh, Elena. I appreciate it. Not All right, before we begin, I want to just uh, mention a couple of things from uh, last week. One of the uh, books that we discussed, and I, I, I remember uh, Angela brought it up, and I think it was, uh, if it was on the Zoom, who also talked about it, uh, with The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. It was Jim. Jim, Okay. So I have a copy, so I'm going to leave it here at the end just for you to look through it. You can look through the uh, contents. Um, oh, and this is, sorry, I'm going back in time. This was uh, given to me in 11 January 2004 uh, by a <laughs> friend of mine, Howard. Um, I think it was Ash. Oh, gee, I forget. I know he was in Florida. But anyway, I visited his base, and uh, he gave me this at a prayer breakfast. Now, what's interesting, too, to add to that, though, is there's another book, uh, which is entitled Turnaround. And what has uh, happened is uh, this is by Forrest Alum, and um, the title is Turnaround, the Orthodox Purpose-Driven Life. Oh. So what he did was taking basics of that and adapted it. And in this uh, table of contents here, uh, there's, let me get exactly how many sections, which is uh, very nice. There's four sections. So it's like week one, week two, week three, and week four. What he does very well is, um, because I have most of it underlined or highlighted, uh, he does very well on uh, going back to scripture and the church fathers. Mm -hmm. So he would take something like this and say, now we're going to put it in the orthodox setting, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you could look at both of these. We may want to look at perhaps going into this one in the future because it would be like a Bible study mm -hmm. in a sense, but you get extra there with uh, added church father information. And what's good about it, he actually asks you questions. It says, think, respond, and apply. And mm -hmm. so 
he basically is giving us the Bible study. So it'll be less work for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to leave Where these both here so that you can look at them. And, Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, what ahead. is the name of the book again? This, and, one, and the is, this one is yes. called Turnaround, colon, yes. The <clears throat> Orthodox Purpose Driven Life. The Orthodox Purpose Driven Life. Nope. And the author is uh, Forrest Long, F-O-R-R-E-S-T-L-O-N-G. Regina Orthodox Press is where it came from. So we'll take a look at that for, for down the road. All right, I think those were the only two things I wanted to mention before we uh, get started. Uh, so today we're going to start off, we just finished Our Father last week in commenting on the first two words. Now we're going to go into who art in heaven and maybe into hallowed be thy name. I think we may be able to get to that part, maybe. So um, if you turn to the question and answer, A1A. The New Testament speaks of at least three heavens. The first reference is the what surrounding the earth. Begins with an A-T. Atmosphere. Atmosphere. The, another word for firmament. firmament but in this case, it's the atmosphere surrounding the earth. Matthew 6.26 says, Look at the birds of the air or the heavens, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? What is it basically, what does it say, say in Matthew there? What are we to do? We shouldn't worry so much about daily things. Don't, you know, don't get fixated on everything. Trust you know, God. trust God. That's basically the, the uh, message here. All right? Be concerned, but remember he's still in charge. That doesn't mean we lay down and say, God send us some food. Don't That's you? right. Yeah. That's right. Dora? Yes. Give daily bread. And yes. It doesn't say tomorrow and the next week. And the next yeah. Week. Right. Only today. Right. Tomorrow is a different. A different story. story. Worry yourself. So live more in the present. We so live more in the present and look at our daily needs. Okay. B. The second reference of heavens is the outer what of heavenly bodies. Space. Outer space. Outer space. Yes. S P A C E. So think about it. When we were putting up. You know, when you go farther and farther, there's like, for example, how anybody a pilot here? How high can the airplanes fly? Yeah, uh, yeah this one person here. <laughs> I would think, you know, probably I'm thinking 35, 40. I don't know if you yeah. can go you know, more than that. Then you go on, you know, and you talk about the troposphere, the stratosphere, and the ionosphere. So if you look at the three levels as you go on, it goes that way. Okay, so in this case, it's the outer space of heavenly bodies. Again, Matthew 24, 29 states, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. So when you want signs, those will be the signs to the end. And so you start to look at it. So we have the atmosphere, we have outer space. And now we get to the third part. The third reference, see there, to heaven, and the one which is referred to in the Lord's Prayer is above and beyond what dimension? Physical. physical. It's above and beyond the physical dimension of being where God's what is fully manifest. manifest. Presence. 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 So you start to look at this, and uh, is there a tissue here? Yeah, purple. Let me erase this and uh, put, <clears throat> be able to use this uh, whiteboard again. Now, what happens is, and we'll talk about this a little later on uh, in more detail. But as we were talking about it here, and we're looking at it, we're looking at, again, I'll talk from, let's start from the bottom. Um, working our way up. Okay, here's, here's the earth. 
atmosphere, outer space. And both of these are like the physical aspects of it. Now we get into God's presence. One of the early questions in the early church catechisms was always, where is God? And the answer always was everywhere. everywhere. So in other words, most people realize that God's presence is with us down here. It's in nature and all that. But we're going to be talking a lot about his kingdom, about his kingdom and what's going to be like there. So literally, when we say our father who art in heaven, number D, in letter D, in the heavens mean meaning God is, I just gave it aware, everywhere, and over all things. The heavens are over all and encompass all. Wherever man goes on earth or in the air or even in space, the heavens are around him and over him. In other words, there's not a place that God does not exist. E, to say that the Father is in the heavens means that he is not tied down or limited to any location whatsoever. That's important. He is what is called a, a, a term. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, omnipresent. O M N I present, which means he is present everywhere at all times at the same time, as opposed to the God of the Hebrews. Okay, yeah, the phrase in heaven signifies the begins with H O L holiness, holiness of God. So when we say in heaven, we're thinking already spiritually his presence, holy. The holiness of God the Father and not his residence. That's a good thing to remember. When we talk about who art in heaven, it's not his residence. Where is he as much as his holiness? What is? Because we know he's, I don't want to give it away. Oh. It's coming up next, so I don't really want to. All right. So what does this mean uh, where we say that uh, in heaven signifies God's holiness and not his residence? You want to add anything to what I said or put in your own words? Okay, let's just go on. Deuteronomy 10, 17 states, number two, for the Lord your God is the God of what? God's. God's. He's the God of gods, G-O-D-S, but with a small G. He, God is capital G, but there are a lot of gods, small G. And I have a question about that. Go ahead. What is it? Because is it one of the hymns we sing? Is that a gods or something? Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, how many gods are there? <laughs> how, many, how many one true gods are there? One. Oh, one. Yes. But how many gods have there been? Oh. In Greek mythology. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the point, though. Anybody can make anyone or anything a god. So, for example, uh, I'm sorry, the Babel. Only one is real. A lot of Babel. A lot of Babel. Tower of Babel, when you think of it. They <clears throat> trying to elate themselves and, you know, try to reach up to heaven. Most people... What did the Israel uh, people do wrong? What did they do against God? The golden calf. They had the golden calf. They went into other areas by who were people living under pagan gods. They had the ox. They had the sun. They had the moon. They where that's where we get what astrology. They God, though they knew God. No, that they, they knew their God, the calf. The this or that that was, the, that was their God. But they no, he, they, he was not the true God to them. No, he, they did not know him as and that's why that's why he called them a stiff-necked people. They had too many small G's. They were go, allowing themselves to be intermarried with other people who did not. Now, what did the Roman Emperor want everybody to do? Worship as God. How? What did they? What was required for them to do? And they refused to do it. The Christians come in. Sacrifice. What? 
burn incense. Oh. Burn incense. They wanted the, uh, the Roman emperor said, come to me, burn the incense, make the offering. Now, what about the three Babylonian youths in the furnace? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar says, worship my God. Bow down. And bow down to worship my God. And they said what? Hit the no. <laughs> hit, <laughs> hit the trail. Basically, they said, whether he saves me or whether he doesn't, I'm remaining loyal to my God, the true God. And so what you have to be very careful of can you make a God of anything? Yes. yes. Anything. You don't have to have a physical person. You could have a physical being, like we talked about the golden calf. You talked about the sun, the moon. And that's where you get into astrology. Yes. I think in our times now, it's much more believable and common for people to make a God of, of something, whether it's their job or their money. Or <laughs> money. Or I mean, you don't hear that many people saying, oh, I don't even know how or whatever no. i mean but no. you know it's it's the other things that's that right might... where is the cow still sacred in india. India. india yeah but you're right in america most of it would be materialism yes yeah. materialism and if it's money if not money then it turns into power so you go from money to power so in other words we all will worship someone or something the question is is it the true God or are we making basically anytime you work, don't worship the true God, we are worshiping idols. idols, which is given by Satan. Didn't you say that Putin worships wealth and power? I mean, any any leader, you go back to you go back to the, the early times from the beginning of time. In Israel at times, as well as in um, Hitler, Nero, you know, the big question becomes, and if we get into the book of Revelation, who is, if I asked you, who do you think is the Antichrist? <laughs> so if you're living today, you have your choice, you know, Hitler. and Hitler, you go back, Lenin, Lenin. She lived a long life. She be, she believed in land. Yes. Yes. Wow. Now, I don't have time to go into this, but in the book of Revelation, what's the number given to the Antichrist? I don't have time. But in early times, they would give numbers to letters. And as you go through the alphabet, the one that you would come up with, at that time, again, thinking about what was going on at this time, this would be always referred to, you'll see in most of them. I'll show you how that's done someday. We don't have time to go into it. But if you, I could show you how you come up with the number 666, but it was always referred to as Nero. Now, after Nero goes, <laughs> you know, and we have an array of characters after that to choose from. All right, you mentioned some of them, Lenin, Hitler, Mussolini. You go beyond no that. Know, uh, yeah. And a lot of you look at the uh, some of the early Christian people, what they went through is just amazing. Okay, so the point that we're getting at here is it's very important to understand we're talking about God's holiness, not his residence. All right, now. The fourth, in Deuteronomy 10, 17, for the Lord your God is the God of God, small g. In other words, he rules over everyone. And the Lord of Lord, Lord. Lord, small l. I knew you'd get on to this. The great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality. What is to show no partiality means? He treats everybody equal fair. fair. Nor takes a bribe. Ephesians 4, 6 tells us, this is a nice um, scripture to remember. There is one God and Father of all who is above uh, wow. all and through, through all. all and yeah. all right. That is a good one to remember. Very good scripture. There is one God, the Father of all, who is above all and through, T-H-R-O-U-G-H, all and 
in you all or in all. Now, I'm going to put a cross up here on the board, a rudimentary cross. And as we're going to talk about this now, um, in B, 3B, Father Schmemann calls heaven the vertical. I gave it away. The vertical dimension of life. In other words, it's this line. All right. When you think of the cross, think of the heavens, God, us coming down to us of life, which represents our heavenly or what? Spiritual. All right. This is the heavenly and spiritual part that we're thinking about heavenly or spiritual all right now going on the horizontal dimension what's going across on the cross all right is uh horizontal dimension being our what earthly 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 lower or worldly life so this is our earthly or worldly life. All right. This is not the physical heaven, but rather the highest pole of human life. The ultimate vocation of man's glory and destiny. destiny. This is where we want to wind up with him in the kingdom of God in paradise. He is our eternal. eternal home. So what we want to do is eventually be with him in his heavenly eternal home. Now, the gospel lesson from this past week, what did it tell us about that? You remember listening to it? Judgment. It was judgment. And so therefore there will be a judgment day. So when we see our spiritual dimension here and our earthly life, all right, they cross. But our home is always going to be where we want to be up here. And a lot of people forget that they live too much on this level. The level we want to start dealing with is, and I should put an arrow here. This is the way we want to be going. Mm -hmm. So let's say we're starting off when we're born down here. We're getting older. Hopefully we're getting wiser. But if we take our eyes off the goal, mm -hmm. what do these things do to us? Cross away. Distract. distract us. Mm -hmm. They distract us. So a lot of people forget that. So when you see the cross, think of God having a direct line to us. The what? Holy Spirit. He has a direct line to us. But if we allow this stuff to divert us, it's like electrical shocks taking us away. These hours are going to be going this way. And the devil has a lot to do with it. And the devil has a lot to do with it. But we choose to give him the power or not. So it's uh, something when you think of the cross, you look at it a little differently now. You think of the heavenly, think of the earthly, but where do you want to be? In the eternal kingdom of God. Okay? Now, four, where do people, even non-believers, like to go to contemplate and meditate? The Orthodox theologian Oliver Clement says to two places. We talked about this last week. What are the two places a lot of people yeah, monster. mountains, the average person, not oh, the, uh, <laughs> I said, even non-believers. <laughs> the, uh, the true Orthodox are going to go to Monte, but we're talking about normally going to the mountains or the oceans where what, what happens there? What do you see there? The water and the sky are melted into a complete sphere when you think about it. Mm. Your mind. Exactly. It's nature. You yes. see the sky, the blue, you see the yeah. water, 
they're only blue color, wow, hopefully. Uh, in the mountains, etc. Everything comes together. Where else can we find the Father who art in heaven? He again asks, to which he responds, in the what? Huh? Heart. heart. In the heart. In other words, a lot of people will try to get away, which is good. But don't forget, you could always have him in your own heart, no matter where you go. All right, I'm going to uh, read this uh, section uh, here in Clement's book. Um, it's entitled Three Prayers. Um, get to the where I wonder exactly. Uh, okay, it says, the ascetics say that we can find God in the heart, in the innermost center, in the greatest step where our whole being comes together and opens onto an abyss of light. The inner heaven, the color of sapphire, according to Evagrius Apontas, here's what he writes. One of our daily tasks is precisely to awaken in ourselves the power within the depths of our heart. Usually we live in our heads and in our sexuality with our hearts closed off. But only the heart can serve as the crucible in which our understanding and desire are transformed. And though we may not reach the luminous abyss, sparks may fly from it and our hearts burn with an immense yet gentle shudder. So what happens here, he talks about the heart. And so when we talk about our father who art in heaven and we try to place ourselves in God's presence, whether it's in mountains or in uh, your oceans, water, etc. Don't ever forget that where we have him always is the heart. And that's where we keep going back to. Remember when we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, bring your prayer from the mind into the heart. And so not only what we recite saying the words, but what we think about what we say, and then what we feel about what we pray. So it becomes very important. All right, St. Nicodemus, number five, the Augurite states, because our father is in heaven, we too must intellectually be in heaven. There where our homeland is, the higher Jerusalem, and not have our mind as the swine do down here on the earth. Mm -hmm. When you think of swine and you think of uh, one of the uh, parables from the scriptures, what do you, uh, what's the parable you think of with swine? Cool. Yeah. Going over the mountain. Okay, that's number one. When the uh, uh, Christ said, you know, the, the evil spirits go into them and go back. What's another one? Prodigal son. The prodigal son. And what did he, the, what happened with the prodigal son? When you think of what kind of picture do you see him with the swine? Is it very clean, dirty, no, no, no. ugly, dirty, as low as you can get? In fact, they said the swine were eating better than he was. Yes. You know, so it shows you how bad everything was. Now, what happens? Let's go on there. Um, our mind must be in our sweetest Savior, Master, on the heavenly beauties of paradise. You see, we still go back to this heavenly, eternal home. And it's very difficult sometimes not to focus on that. We get too focused on the earthly. Not only in time of prayer, but always and at all times, we must keep our mind on heaven so that the mind is not dispersed down here on perishable and temporary things. Now, when you think about this, uh, for example, in, let's say, a military setting, you always are going to hear, let me erase this. <clears throat> Or what you're going to do, you're always going to want to say, how are you speaking strategically? And then to support that, you're going to think tactically. All right. Which one is the long view? Strategic. This would be the long view, which is the shorter. Tactical, obviously. Now, too many of us Think of it in spiritual terms. Where are we mostly? At the tactical or at the strategic level? Tactically. Why? Why are we at this level? Life gets in the way. Life gets in the way. What else? Immediate satisfaction. Immediate satisfaction. What else? I think that uh, we don't really think about heaven, but we see everything else. 
we're distracted going back to what was said. In other words, we, and that's why it always says, we, in each person, we should see the what and what of God. Image. Image and likeness. likeness. In other words, every time we see another person, mm. instead of seeing George and Maria, we should see Jesus. You cannot see Jesus in pudding now. In pudding, whatever you uh, in Putin. Putin. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Even Putin. 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 <laughs> but what happens here is we are thinking tactically and not strategically. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to always remember too, spiritually, um, and this is where you have to be careful of going back to where Bill said, we want immediate satisfaction. And if God doesn't provide it, it even becomes easier for us to take our eyes off paradise mm -hmm. off God who is in heaven mm -hmm. thinking too much about here the horizontal line of everything here on earth okay all right is this possible for us to do what we just read there or is it only for months it's possible, it's possible yes <laughs> all right but I could sense you want to say <laughs> what do you want to say Mary um we have to make time and place. Very and good. You have to make time. You have to make place. The distractions are easy. The concerns are easy. Everyday life, as right. uh, Nancy mentioned, happens, and we have to deal with that. It is not easy. It comes down to one word beginning with a D. Discipline. Discipline. Discipline, Discipline Michael said. Discipline. It really does. How many hours of the day do you have? 24. 24. Isn't it amazing how many people can get done, what they can get done in 24 hours, and, and isn't it amazing how little other people can get done in 24 hours? Yes. In other words, is it dependent on the amount of hours you have? No. Yeah? It's a discipline. Father? Yes. Go right ahead. Hi, it's Angela. Hey, Angela. I, I, want, I wanted to give an example um, so for example, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I go into work and they're 10 hour days and we've been so short staffed lately that it's been really stressful and I can get, you know, irritated and a little snappy. So I've sort of started a habit on my way to work. I'll listen to a podcast, whether it's the 365 day Bible or something that's spiritual and and there's nothing on the radio anyway, <laughs> but, you know, I'll drive to work and it sets me, it kind of reminds me, okay, whatever happens today, it's really all small stuff and it's not going to matter tomorrow. And I really just want to try my best, you know, to help people and do what I can do. And it just sort of sets the tone, but like you were saying, it's sort of a habit of discipline. Like you have to, you have to intentionally incorporate that in your day otherwise it's like not going to magically happen you mentioned two words there uh if i can pick up on um intention it has to be intentional there's no question about it mm -hmm. anything we do you have a reason for doing it you like whatever you're doing or you wouldn't be doing it you may like something else that you're not doing, but you don't like it enough <laughs> to do it. Yeah. So it is an intention. And you're going to feed whatever it is you want to feed. Now, then after you start doing this, you will find out, like I said, with prayer and fasting and anything else, these will become habits. Mm -hmm. And you won't have to force yourself to do them. Right. You will not have to force yourself. You will be disciplined. And, you know, let's face it, there are some people who are more disciplined than others. And so people have different personalities, but we still all have the same 24 hours. And we still make decisions right from the beginning on whether you're going to work in the morning or whether you're coming home from work or whether you're not, whatever it is, we are still dealing with the aspect of we have to make the intention become a habit. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Angela. I appreciate it. Anybody else? Yes, Mary. When you first started talking about um, the discipline, 
Um, I really think desire is paired right with it. I know intention, intention is similar. Yes. But you can have the intention form a habit. Mm -hmm. And if your desire doesn't grow, you just pour tongue. Yeah. I'm there right now. <laughs> I got a great habit, you know, like I've got, and that's where I look forward to Lent to be able to focus. Yeah. Yeah. What and and this is why we have seasons in the church. Yeah. This is why we have Advent. This is why we have Great Lent. This is why we have Pascha, Christmas. In other words, it is a cycle because everything is a cycle. You know, think about it. How many hours do you sleep? A day or how many do you work or how many do you have for, for recreation so you go down the line and a lot of times our lives are out of balance if there was one thing that we have to look for it would be balance now obviously when we balance our lives we have to think mentally bodily physically spiritually what are we doing to take care of our bodies? Are we working out? Are we walking? Are we doing something? Because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. What are we doing spiritually to grow Bible study, Bible reading, prayer, worship? And what are we doing emotionally as well as mentally to better ourselves? Taking classes, reading, whatever. Recreation in terms of um, the gifts that you may be blessed with. So it becomes the whole person. In other words, the whole person becomes involved here. So in B, I said, what happens to us if we are not able to do this? How do you feel if you, you're out of balance? Despair. Despair. You could get down to despair. That's going pretty low. Lost. Lost. Depressed. Depressed. Frustrated. Frustrated. Yes. Usually we put frustration, yes. and then we get down to, what was the one you mentioned? Depression, Depression then down to this. this. <laughs> the Father's Church Fathers tell us, you will go down this road spiritually. The mm -hmm. worst one is despair. despair. Mm -hmm. That's almost where you're giving up. You're just saying, mm -hmm. I can't deal with this anymore. And so you have to be very careful because, again, the devil will work on us where we are the weakest and go for it. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to say, so I agree with Mary with the intention because isn't there a saying, the road to hell is paved with good intention? <laughs> intention, yes. Where, you know, you could, I mean, you meet a lot of people and you even you invite them to church or whatever. And they say, oh, I wanted to come. I meant to come, but I didn't come. You know, it's not really what we intend to do. It's what we actually do. All right. Yeah. Oh, because a lot of times we do think, yeah. well, it'd be nice if I did this or that and then something else. You know. And you and generally speaking, we know it's good for us. Yes. Anybody else on Zoom? Yes. And All right. So I wanted to follow up on that. So Okay, let's say I had the intention, I'm sort of in the habit, but the thing is right now it's so rewarding and it's helping me. So somehow there has to be that positive feedback. So for example, Mary, you know, you may be doing something and somehow it's somehow not fulfilling you or it's not answering what you need at the moment. So it's like you have to explore, we almost have to be flexible and explore ways to remember about you know our goals and our spiritual world that is rewarding to us so that we continue to do it because if it's if it's just you know um i don't know a chore or it doesn't do anything for us we're probably not going to continue yeah good point yeah. And I, guess I would say is that you may have to try something different right i think that sometimes we have good intentions but like let's say going to the gym i know when I, the few times i go <laughs> i'll admit up front but the last time, the week i was there on two different days and I, because of my uh, achilles thing i can't do a lot on the treadmill and so forth so what i do is use the bike but the beauty about it is they have three different bikes there and it's very interesting because the one has handles and I, that's the one i use uh, the best and then there's a one that you sit horizontally and you use the pedals and then another one. And what I'm thinking is, it's like prayer. You know, we could pray from a prayer book. We can pray by being outside and just sitting outside and glorifying God. We can pray in silence. In other words, 
you may want to break up what you've done or change the routine because the habits could be good, but they could become habitual in the sense that you don't appreciate them. And so I would just say, be flexible and just see if what you need to change, you know, or you're reading this book and you like it, but instead of reading one from the church fathers, I want to read maybe Purpose Driven Life. I don't know. That The point is you may want to try different things. Same way with, uh, if I can, Marcus, one more thing. Same way with your circle of friends. Sometimes you get so used to certain friends, which is good. Don't get me wrong. They may be your inner circle. But have you ever gone up to somebody and just tried to befriend somebody that you think maybe you wouldn't be friends with? And you may find out you have a lot more in common or you may learn from them or whatever. So just something to think about. Marcos? I just was going to say, are we talking about what all of us will sometimes do is get in a rut? We get in a rut. Yeah. Yes. And it's easy to get into a rut. But when you get in a rut, how do you get out? You got to seek some help outside, maybe. Okay. And that's another thing. Be willing to admit you're in a rut and get some help, whether it be through a friend, through a uh, spiritual father, whatever. Our, our spouse sometimes spouse. can yep. be yep. our best friend at that point because uh, they know us better than anybody, usually. And you know, we, we go to God course first but uh yeah i apologize by the way for being late i had an unavoidable something happened but uh, at any rate um i've never been all that into reading prayers mm -hmm. i mean i've done it right but mm -hmm. i didn't have a strong connection with it until i was challenged by kukla mm -hmm. you know? yeah and and that's the point you were challenged and you Everybody has a different way. Just like if I asked you right now to describe God to me. Love. Okay. And that's the prime thing, Marianne. That would be the prime thing. But I bet you, even if I could ask you to draw him, I'd see a lot of different pictures here. Yeah. As I would in adjectives. Love would be the first one, hopefully. There would be a lot more that you would think of as father. The good thing about that is everybody has their perception of how to approach God. The best advice I think could be given to anybody is be yourself. Be who you are and approach God as you, not as something you read in a book or somewhere else. If you can find God on a mountaintop and you just feel elated, go to as many mountaintops as often as you can. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes we try to fit the square peg in the round hole and it doesn't work. So be who you are and approach God uh, honestly from where you are. Let's finish off here. Uh, number six. Thus, when we pray our Father who art in heaven, we pray through. Remember those words? With words such as, Father, thank you for heaven. The hope, the anticipation of heaven. Thank you that you are in heaven. Thank you for the promise that you we too shall be where you are. Thank you for looking down upon us sinners and lifting up our eyes to you. May we have the faith to endure to the end of our earthly lives so that we can one day be joined to you, our earthly family, and all the saints. You see the difference between praying our Father who art in heaven and then what you just heard there. So this is how you pray through. Stop. You and you may want to do this as a discipline for the next week. Take the Lord's Prayer and pray it through. You heard what Ekaterini and Dora prayed through last week on the words, Our Father. You just heard this prayer. You may want to write down, it doesn't have to be this long, how you would pray through who art in heaven. Or we're going to go on to the next part, hallowed be thy name. So either one, but this is how you pray through it. John 17, 24 states, Father, I desire that they all, so whom you gave me, may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. God is with us always. When we put our Father together with who art in heaven, the two things that come together are the what of God? Love of God. Love of God. And the power. power of God. It could be peace too. 
but power because he's above all, in all, and through all. He is everything. Okay? Philippians 3.20 clearly states that our citizenship is in um, heaven. Can I start capital H? I mean, it really, could be. <laughs> I'm really I'm always, this as a little kid. Yeah. That should be capital H. You're right. They probably should be. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Any questions on who art in heaven? Anything you want to add or comment on? Okay, then we'll go on to hallowed be thy name. As I mentioned last week, a little kid said, Harold be thy name. That's what he thought. <laughs> okay, hallowed, number one, comes from the Greek word agiasteto, which means to be counted as oh, holy. Okay. Counted as holy or to be treated as set apart or separate. To be holy means to be set apart, to be separate from the common. From, In other words, we are extending ourselves up to um, God. It means that the Father's name is different from all other names. There is none but you, you and you alone, who are above, before, and over all. This is Solomon's Prayer of Devotion in 1 Kingdoms 8.23. Therefore... The father's name should be treated with respect, respect devotion, devotion, and honor. 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 Because God's name is holy, righteous, and pure. Every time we prepare for confession, we think of the uh, advice not to take your Lord's name in vain. All right. When you think of God, we should think of him as being holy, respecting him, uh, offering our devotion to him, honoring him, glorifying him. And if we had him in, at that level, we would not want to take his name in vain. Marcos. I plead ignorance to this commandment a lot of my life. I thought it was just saying, swearing. Yes, yeah, swear. No. It's far more than that. Right. And it, that's to pretend that we're doing this in the name of God. Right. And it's not. Right. Yeah, you want to be careful. In other words, do you want to expound on that? Well, uh, how many false prophets and false leaders are out there pulling people away from, right. from the true faith? Right. We have, you know, we're all... Uh, not wanting to judge other Christian faith works, right. but you know we have some that are definitely they're altering the scriptures. They're they're uh, saying Jesus is not the Son of God, right? So you know, they're, but they're having people think they're doing this in the name in the of name God. of Christ. You always want to be careful of doing things in the name of Christ and not not doing the right thing. And so, in other words, whether it's not acknowledging Jesus as both fully God and fully man, as, you know, his two natures or not his and his two wills, if we don't see him as both God and man, uh, holy and, and divine, as well as um, earthly, then we realize that there are a lot of Christians out there who on paper say they uh, are Christians, but don't believe that. In the same light, I had a very wise Christian Bible teacher. Uh, everybody knows her. I'm not going to mention her name right now, but um, she, what Joyce Meyer, she said um, that if we say to somebody, I'm giving you uh, the love of Jesus, that's the same thing because the love of Jesus is not us. We can only, we cannot. You have the love of Jesus to someone. We can. Yeah, I think that may get into a little semantics. Yeah, uh, and right. to me, I would not draw the line that close. You know, uh, I, I well, mean, that's a good question for you, then. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure I would draw it that close. If we are living a Christian life and we're offering, uh, you know, something, first of all, we just do it, you know, and we don't have to say why it's being done or whatever. But right. I, I would say that as followers of Jesus Christ, we have him dwelling within us so we can offer that. 
you know, I'm not offering his body and blood, you know, let's right. put it that way, but I can offer the love. We should be God-like, Christ-like. And so we're not of his essence, but we are to share his energy. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Okay, going on here. Um, three, it is interesting to know that in the Old Covenant, it was a custom of the Jews never to say the sacred name of God, Yahweh, hmm. the I am. In fact, they would not write his name fully. They would leave a blank between Y-H and H. And so you'll see that many times. This was to guard against defilement of the divine name and to safeguard against transgressing the commandments in, uh, commandment in Exodus 27. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. So in other words, they had God so high and holy that for us to say God, they would eat, just write it and leave a blank. Or they would not even say the word sometimes, depending. So what happens here, uh, let's turn to, um, well, let's go on to Exodus 3.13 to 15. It says, so Moses said to God, indeed, when I go to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your father sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I tell them? Then God said to Moses, I am the existing one. Ooh. He also said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the existing one sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses again, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob sent me to you. This is my name forever, my memorial to all generations. Let's turn to page 69 in the Orthodox Study Bible and read the note that accompanies this, and we'll look at what is exactly said there. Page 69, Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. 3, verse 14, it's uh, at the end of the second column on page 68. I'm going to read that part there. Um, Chapter 3, it's under the burning bush section, chapter 3, verse 14, and it's on page 68. Then God said to Moses, I am the existing one. He also said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel what I just read there. This is my name forever and my memorial to all generations. He goes on to say, I have surely looked up upon you and all the things that happened to you in Egypt and will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt and goes on and on. Now, on the uh, Orthodox Study Bible footnote for 314 on the bottom of page 69. It says, the name I am the existing one is the name for the essence of God, which is one and undivided. This is according to Athanasius as well as uh, John of Damascus. This essence is like a boundless sea containing all things yet not contained by anything. The Son is eternally begotten from the essence of the Father. When Jesus said he was the existing one, the Jews who were listening took up stones to stone him, for they knew this passage in Exodus. They were upset that Jesus was calling himself God in the same way that they uh, knew in the Old Testament. He is acknowledged as the existing one in every vesper service of the church. All right, now. Here's the icon of Jesus, all right? He's blessing. Up here, we have, I, I'm going to say in English, I-C-X-C, -C, the first and last letters of Jesus in Greek, and the first and last letters of Christ. However, we see, what are those Greek letters there? I am. In Greek. Omega. Omega. Me. Me. Omicron. And it means, I am. I am. So when people ask you, I'll pass this around, what do those letters mean? It's his name. I am. And it's on the icon of Christ. He has the same essence as God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. So whenever you see, go up and look at the icons in the church on Sunday. Look at the one on the right-hand side where he's blessing, and you will see the same letters. 
you will see the same. We'll get them back to you. You can take a look at it. All right? And it's a good when you, people come into the church, if they ever ask you, what does those letters, ICXC, and then I'm sharing this. They're all Greek, but um, that's what it means. Also, for the Holy Table, mm -hmm. it has the design on the marble. Mm -hmm. A, Omega. Omega. That means I'm the beginning and the end. Yeah, exactly. And the important point is to know all of this because so often we take things for granted or we don't ask, you know, and especially if they're in a different language, whether it be in uh, Church of Slavonic, Greek, uh, Serbian, whatever. So um, but look at that. All right. C, God's name is a reflection of his what? Oh. This one's not easy. Being. Being. Yes. I am is like saying be, you know. This is who I am. It's his being, his inner essence. God is the only self-existent or self-sufficient being. No one else is self-existing nor self-efficient. Only God has what in and of himself. Even before that. Life? Life. Nobody can create. Only God. Yes. And that, now, was there a time God did not exist? No. 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 That's the point. If there was a time he did not exist, we would have to have some other greater being. He is the I am. He is the being. He is the self-sufficient person. But this, I'm sorry, from time to time, especially at night, you look out the space, it's dark. You say, where is God? Is he behind that screen? <laughs> right. You know? Right. The heavens. <laughs> is he behind? That's right. You're right. That's, that's like really, that's really good. There's got to be a box. Yes. And we're in the box. Yeah. And God is probably holding the box. But what's outside the box? Yeah. It's yeah. incomprehensible. And when yeah. you think about these people who have gone up into outer space, and they're looking down, like you're looking up there to the stars and so on. They're looking down at the whole earth. And they see the outline of North and South America. And you're saying, in fact, they can pick out fires where they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they're going beyond that, and you say to yourself, how far can we go? Yeah. It, it's just, for us, mind-boggling, because our minds are limited. We are limited in how we can see, what we can see, what we can perceive. But to me, I always, I don't know, it just seems sometimes we try to make things too complicated. It's like going to a, an aquarium and saying, can all of these different species have come into being? You know, if you cannot see God is and there or in the stars, and it, I don't know more to show. I don't know what more to show. It's sometimes you just cannot convince people. You know, sometimes people have ears but don't hear, eyes but don't see. And, and after a while, it's better to just move on to somebody who has ears to hear, eyes to see. Somebody more yeah, comment? Go. There are many suns, the stars. Yeah, the suns. Yeah. And you wonder, where is he? Yeah. 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 Is there life there? You know, yeah. I mean, we're finding more and more that there's not human life as we know it <laughs> in the places, you know. But I, I think what's amazing to me, again, is look at how much has been learned over the years, especially in the last century. Yeah. And what they're doing now with everything from tremendous telescopes to everything else, to the point to where you say, how far will God let man go? Yeah, I've said that. How far, when is the line drawn yeah. to where we see the Antichrist coming? That's I, I don't know. That's, that's mm -hmm. such a good question. I don't know. And, cool. and, and you know what? We'll never know. And it's not ours to know. And there is life up there. You know, there's a little green man that you know, little bit past. I have somebody you can start talking to, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bad dress in red. <laughs> a beard. That's for leprechaun. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, let's finish off here. 
St. John Chrysostom, number four. Oh, I'm sorry, D. In the New Testament, God the Father exalts to the highest place and gave him the name which is above every name, Philippians 2, 9. And in the making the name of the Father holy, Christian Jew, Christians do so in the name of the Son, S-O-N, Jesus Christ. St. John Chrysostom says that we can honor the hallowed name of God by living holy and pure lives ourselves. So when we are asked, how do you honor God? By example. By example. You know, how many times have you heard? It's not what you say to people. It's what you show them. They're going to learn more about your behavior, especially children. You know, that's why so many times parents have to say, don't do as I tell you. Uh, don't do as I do. Do as I tell you. Unfortunately, unfortunately, hallowed be thy name means to render us worthy to live purely. So through us, all will glorify you to set our clean life as an example to all. So that everyone who sees us will ascribe to the Lord glorification for that. Notice it's not about us. It's about living our lives so that they honor the son, father, son, Holy spirit. The first per purpose of man is to what glorify. glorify always start out with glorifying praising god by his life when peter 1 15 16 states but as he who called you is holy you also be holy in all your what conduct conduct in other words live your life holy because it is written be holy because I am holy. I am holy. In other words, you're doing this for me. If you are calling yourself a follower of Christ, be holy because I am holy. All right. So we did finish it. Very yes. good. We actually got through two of the uh, uh, sections. So now we have our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So let's uh, next week we're going to get into thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. We'll probably spend a little time on both of those, especially thy will be done. Yes, Mary. Back to the icon. Yes. And you know, ice always has that division of three. Yeah. And I know you said only on the two on the numbers. On the there's a third at the end. There's Alpha, Omega, and there's yeah, another there's one. Omicron, Omega, and M, me. She's asking I, I yeah. mean, why there are three letters right. if there's only two words translated in English. So all means there. It means I and on is um, I am. On goes together. I am. All and then go together. Yeah, yeah. they go so, together. So that, you know how the um, halo. Oh, halo, it's always... Even as the infant, he's always divided by three. Is that there? Why don't show them your pendant? The Wendigo. Yeah, show them this. Your question is it, it, what? what? What does that mean? You know, all other halos are just regular, but Christ always has it divided by three. Is it for the only only thing? Only because of who, of who he is, of who he is. He, well, he's the I am. In other words, they have they put it in so that you see right. it is the I am. Uh, the others will have nobody could have those words there. Yeah, nobody could have those words there. So that would be it. But uh, when you say three, you're you're talking about like one and then here and here. Yeah. I I don't have an answer for that. Yeah, I would have to. I, I don't know if there's a meaning. I'd be glad to look it up or not iconography vote. I don't know if those of you who uh, are on Zoom, I'm going to try and come closer to the TV to show you this. Uh, maybe you were able to see it. I'm not sure. But the icon we're talking about <clears throat> um, is this, this icon here. And um, if you can see it, you'll see, yeah, you'll see oh, oh. the uh, mm -hmm. ICXC, Jesus Christ, and then mm -hmm. the three Greek letters, which stands for mm -hmm. I am the mm -hmm. existing one. I am. Mm -hmm. So whenever you go to church on Sunday, you look at the icon on the iconostas on the right, you'll see usually one like this where he's blessing. Okay. Well, that's what I hear too. Yeah. I, I don't think, I mean, you could read that into it. I'm not sure that that would be intent. Yeah. Well, you know, like on the Virgin Mary, she always has the 
pre plus before, during, and after, right? Here, here, and here, usually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, I think with three, I mean, yeah, we always read into a Trinitarian, you know, and so forth, but I have to look at specifics on somebody who uh, has done iconography to see whether there is a meaning in each of those three. Bill, you were going to say something. Number five, the last number. Yes. I have to agree with Mark, who's probably said it every time we meet. But every day we're going further and further away from that mark. Uh, from uh, number five. Number five, the first purpose yeah. is to glorify God, and yeah. every day we're getting farther away from that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, why would you say that, uh, Bill? When you say what what examples would you be using? The hatred, the difference, the division. Division, yeah. The eagles that yeah. some people have. Yes, yeah. I, I would say you're you are totally right about that. Now, let me ask you this though. Was it any different at any other time? No, no. But I think it's getting worse. Yeah, and, and I think that, and we could argue this, there's no right answer to it. Um, I would love to hear our parents and grandparents talk about what it was like when they were living. Well, you know. Because we live in this time. time mm -hmm. we think, but I'm sure they dealt with the same things way back then. Yeah. In a, in, a, in a different mm -hmm. manner, but the same yes. same same yes. issues, but a different yeah. expression. It yeah, to be on a larger scale. Now. On a larger scale. Well, you know, the world is interconnected now, yeah. and so we have technology that, uh, you know, you know what's going on around the world That's immediately. Whereas I think most people, when you think about when the United States was started, you know, did most people know in uh, Los Angeles what was going on in New York? Not too much. It took a while back, probably in the 17, 1800s, you know, or look what happened when they put the railroad through. That was a big thing, let alone the airplanes. And so I think that today we're uh, more aware of issues. Now, you know, you can argue who's better or worse off. Is it the uh, relative? what I would call the backward countries, whatever you want to label those, the third world countries or the uh, technologically advanced, educated, you know, superior countries. I, each have their own specific problems. Each one has its problems. The yeah. devil knows how to attack the United yes. States, as well as Swahili and Transylvania and uh, Australia and you name it. In other words, he knows how to get after people. Mm -hmm. He knows how to get after people. But here's the point. You have to be uh, remember one thing that we have to always keep. Where did I put that marker? Our uh, always keep our eyes on what the heavenly kingdom. Now, it's if you keep your eyes there and think of the vertical again. And not worry about the horizontal as much. Keep focused up here. Remember what your purpose is. What our purpose is. <clears throat> then the thing you will always have is if you put your trust in him, you will always have hope. <clears throat> I had a conversation today with an individual from a former parish of mine. He's in his 30s. Uh, has a several master's degree working on a doctorate. He's had more physical problems than I could imagine. Uh, his father was just operated on. His mother had surgery. Tomorrow he's going to be operated on for a hip replacement. He'll need another hip replacement uh, mm -hmm. in six months. And he's 37 years old. And he has a, um, a degenerative thing. If you heard him talk, I could have used him tonight. <laughs> I was going to invite him, but he's getting prepped for surgery tomorrow. And uh, uh, so he's a ball of fire for the for his 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 hopes and his yeah. It, it talk about per, a person, and he, I just let him go because he will go and talk. He's trying to bring more people into the Orthodox Church in his own way, and he has uh, spoken to a lot of different groups, etc. As a lay person as a lay person. He wanted to consider the priesthood, but physically he can't do it. There's just no way. 
Um, but uh, he, uh, an opportunity has arisen to him. He's just accepted into a doctoral program in the medical field. He is one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. And I just listen sometimes. I just listen because you could sense that God's in charge. I trust him. He has blessed us. We've gone through this, you know, that, but he is here with us. And I'm thinking to myself, why should I complain? Yeah, we, 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 you know, when we start saying, I have it bad. Yeah. You concentrate on that problem. You haven't seen the words. <laughs> you haven't seen the words. So, you know, going back here, it's it, don't ever take the focus off this because our purpose is to be one with him in the kingdom, trust him, and have hope in him because he will provide. Maybe in a way that you didn't expect, what we didn't expect, but he will always be there uh, for us. Yeah. Yes, Nancy. I just want to hear about me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm driving, bad thoughts come to my mind, and I'm thinking this and that. And then maybe I say, God forgive me. Yeah. God have mercy on this thing. Yeah, when you're when bad thoughts come to your mind, like you said, whether you're driving or something, you know, make the sign of the cross, God be merciful to me, the sinner. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's yeah, it's it's a constant, it's a constant battle. The other thing I would say is this. I don't know how you feel about it or not. Meaning in a group like this with the people who are on Zoom and you here, there is power in this that the devil will never be able to get mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And you can sense, I don't know how you feel, but I bet you you could feel comfortable going to anybody in this group mm -hmm. and share whatever you want to share. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I would say that that is an example of love. Mm -hmm. That is love. That's the Holy Spirit working. I don't think you could do that with everybody in the parish, mm -hmm. in any parish. I'm not going to say John, I'm talking about any parish. I think you will always have a core group of people, whether you realize or not, you are disciplined, both those of you on Zoom and here, to be here tonight. You had other choices, but you chose to be here. You chose to read the Bible. You chose to discuss it. And there's the devil hates this. <laughs> he is not happy tonight, you know. And so be prepared on the way home. <laughs> you may have to make the side of the cross and say Absolutely. something. But I would say make sure you have people like this that you associate with. That's why it builds you up. Mm -hmm. You want to be around people who uplift you, mm -hmm. not bring you down. Mm -hmm. And so choose people that you can trust, that you have a friendship with, that you can be uplifted. Okay, we're going to, before we say the prayer, anybody else uh, want to comment? Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's stand and we'll finish off with the prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. We thank you, Lord, our God, that again on this occasion, you have opened our eyes to the light of your wisdom. You have gladdened our hearts with the knowledge of truth. We entreat you, Lord, help us always to do your will. Bless our souls and bodies, our words and deeds. Enable us to grow in grace, virtue, and good heaven. That your name may be glorified, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay. Thank yes. you. Uh, before you guys leave on the Zoom, if you don't mind, uh, next week is the beginning of Great Lent.